now and now they can see us we are live welcome to episode 109 of the beastly thoughts live show what's going on everybody what's going on beastly how you doing today feeling good man enjoying my it's been a, a rough weekend one of those weekends where my wife flew out of state and i had to do a lot of uh motherly duties motherly work that i'm not used to <laughs> you know getting the kids prepared for morning and night you look like a bad mother I, I've had a I've had a rough fucking weekend, uh, but thank God, <laughs> the gods of gaming have smiled on me, and my wife flew back in today. Thank God so for all that. is, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's one of those situations where you you don't really know what go, all goes into you know being a homemaker until you have to do it for two days. Now, as soon as she walked in the door, I wanted to kiss her feet and bow down and say, you know, I am not worthy because it's <laughs> a lot of damn work that goes into doing this, man. She homeschools these girls, and it's a constant battle. Man, I just feel like watching Lifetime or something now. I feel like I've, you know, <laughs> really, I've graduated. But I did get a good uh, opportunity to play an awesome, amazing game this week. Yeah, I'm super was, jealous, man. I'm super jealous of that. I was, uh, uh, I've been working like a mad dog for like the last week. Okay. I, I don't know if you know this, my internet went down for like four days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. How did you survive that? It was I, brutal. I I could survive that. <laughs> it was brutal. I had no internet for four days. I missed the Planet Destiny podcast. I did stream for... I. I was actually oh, mid-stream on Monday. I was streaming Destiny on Monday. Internet just went kaput. Like I'm like, what the hell happened? So you know how they have like those outage charts that you can go see online? Like all the whole Northeast was like out of internet, right? For this one wow. cable provider that I'm I'm a, I'm a, you know subscribed to. It was and it came back for most people at 10 p.m. that night. It didn't come back for me until about 10 a.m. the next day. And even then, it was like having a dial-up modem, right? Oh, it was like wow. it was so slow that, like, you know, speedtest.net. It was literally giving me like 200 kilobits per second, 70 p- kilobits <laughs> per second. Like it was measured in, like, the needle wasn't even moving. Wow, <laughs> man, I don't know like, how, com- how I, you know, put up a situation like that. I'd have to drive someplace and they'll see me inside of a McDonald's using their free Wi-Fi. I, at this point, seriously, and, and, I was thinking about it. <laughs> I mean, it's really, it's really rough to, to be without internet now, yeah. and it's hard to believe there was ever a time that we actually did it. Right. You know? So I, I was trying to like tether to my phone, like t- tether to my computer. Like I yeah. had my PlayStation trying to tether to the computer. I had my computer trying to tether, not or I'm sorry, to the phone, and it just wasn't working. Like you can't play Destiny on a phone connection it turns out or at least i can't <laughs> believe it or not I, I know you remember a few uh months ago where my internet was out yeah and, uh, i actually did the show through my phone right during that period of time uh i didn't know i had a tether cap but i have unlimited 4g lte on my phone so during that period the initial two or three days where my internet was down yeah i used it for my playstation 4 and everything worked flawlessly uh all my computers were working tethered to the phone. Nice. The PS4, I was playing The Last of Us. It was working. I was like, God, this is amazing. And then I got a little pop-up said, your your tether limit has been reached. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> no. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> but I was actually able to do it. And that's a, technology, man, has really come a long way. Man. So my wow. problem Welcome. is is that my, my cell phone gets like one bar of service at my house, right? Which oh. normally isn't a problem because I got Wi-Fi and... You know, who uses internet at their house on their phone, right? Like, it's not an issue. It's enough for a phone call, which is, it's fine for a phone call, but it's not good for uh, internet. So I'm happy to have internet back, man. I'm super happy. And then I've been working like a mad dog doing photography all weekend. I I told you I was driving like 80 miles an hour to get (laughs) get home tonight so I could do this show. Because I already missed one podcast. I'm not going to miss both of them. (laughs) <laughs> I just, you know, in the back of my mind, I see you driving through the back roads like Speed Part Three, coming to right? theaters soon. Right? Just show you. It's all the about the. It's all about the drifting. Car. You gotta like just uh, tap those brakes as you're going around the corner. Just let those back <laughs> tires loose a little bit and get some smoke shows going. <laughs> you know, get that Accord really <laughs> rocking. <laughs> oh, yeah, that Accord, man. That's all you need right there. Damn it. Nice drift. <laughs> Yeah, man. Uh, so I, I hear you've had a rough week. I've had kind of a crazy weekend. You know, I, you know, normally when the wife is home and the kids run to you, say, "Daddy, I need." You look at me, and say, "Just leave me alone for a few minutes." Yeah, beat it. I just I, I couldn't <laughs> do it. I'd be in the middle of doing whatever I was doing. You yeah. either The Last of Us or Uncharted Four. Uh-huh. And my girls say, hey, "Can't Daddy, you see I'm busy? Look, look, Nathan Drake <laughs> fucking needs me." <laughs> yeah. Damn it. He ain't going to try- find I, I, the fourth I, chart by himself. 
You got that right, Nova. Nova, are you listening to this? But every time the kids were calling me, I would stop. And I found myself, I just was unable to resist that mothering thing. I look at them and say, what do you need, honey? <laughs> and then they'd tell me, and I'm like, sure. I was so receptive. And I knew in the back of my my mind that Kate was proud of me across the country somewhere. <laughs> but it was one of those situations, and my son's birthday was yesterday. Oh, happy so, birthday. Which son? Uh, Brandon. He turned 14. So both Damn. of my boys are four, 14 every year for three weeks. Brett, uh, he turns 15 on June 2nd. Nice. So My boys are yeah, 14, I wasn't, too. I wasn't They're 14 right now, too. Yeah. I wasn't playing around, man. You know, as soon as Brett was born, I said, hey, we'll knock out the second one in a couple of weeks, have them both in the same year. Yeah, I mean, man. That's, how you do. that's efficiency. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? We don't miss. We don't miss. But, yeah, it's been it's been a good week. And uh, I, the games I've been playing, believe it or not, no wife was here to stop me. Right. So I did get some Last of Us in. God, I had some great games. I mean, some of the best games I've ever had. Uh-huh. Like 17 downs. 15 executions in one death. I got to get insane. you hooked up with Skitty, man, because he's been loving that game, too. Oh, it's so good. It's so good, man. I haven't had a chance to play any of the Uncharted 4 multiplayer yet, but I will say this. Uncharted 4 is a must-have game. It uh-huh. is an experience that you. it's really hard to put into words until you see it. You know, If I explain to you how amazing it is just to sit and look at it, it is the most graphically intense game I've ever seen. That's what I'm hearing. Is, okay, so I haven't got a chance to play, so I'm going to be asking a lot of questions here. I don't want to be spoilery. All right, yeah, don't spoil the game. Don't spoil any of the plot. But I've heard this game looks fantastic. Best, best looking console, console game, game ever. That's ever. what I'm hearing. Yeah. That's you amazing. Know, I heard that before I actually uh, installed it, okay? And I was like, there's no way. You know, I've seen the Order 1886. This game was nothing but graphics, and that was it. No yeah. substance, just graphics. This game can't look better. The game looks fucking better than, way better than the Order 1886. And it's like, you wouldn't believe it, right? And the thing that... And I heard you actually up, play this game, unlike the Order 1886, where you just watch yeah, it. Yeah! <laughs> absolutely. There's a reason to come back and play it. But not just the, not just that, right? All the cutscenes are done in real time. It's real time. These are act, the actual in-game models that they use for all those insane cutscenes that you've seen. These are not CG cutscenes. This is actual in-engine cutscenes that are rendered in real time. I, and it took, you know, Digital Foundry to really solidify that in my mind because at the point I'd seen Digital Foundry's review of the game, which they called a technical marvel, yeah, I, I thought it was just, you know, pre-rendered or whatever CG cutscenes. And then they they uh, explained that this was not that they were actually using the PlayStation Four hardware to render these scenes in real time with the actual in-game models and so when i was looking at the models like during the cutscenes, um you know looking at joel looking at sam uh i was like wow you could see like the pores on their skin individual hairs like you could see like the light shine through individual hairs and then i was playing the game and said there's no way this is the same damn model and i would stop and you know how you you kind of uh alter the camera you get close to a wall and you kind of turn so you can see yeah it's the same damn models i can't believe That's the game impressive. is amazing the gunplay, I've always liked the gunplay in Uncharted, but this gunplay, it went from being a solid 6 to right. 10. So, it's yeah, I've so never high. liked the, the gunplay in Uncharted. It's always been the weakest it's point floaty. for me. It's, it's floaty, floaty. It felt inaccurate. Like, and I felt like I was just, I wanted to use automatic weapons all the time because I just wanted to get as many bullets out there as possible because, like, there just, there wasn't a feel of precision there. Is now it better? It's, now it is. I think they've learned a lot from uh, The Last of Us. They've actually taken different aspects of The Last of Us and really kind of seamlessly blended it into this experience. The gunplay is, to me, the biggest difference because the gunplay was always kind of floaty. You know, when you pop off a shot, the gun goes anywhere. Now you can really get those precision headshots you want. And the Mm -hmm. guns all feel really, really good. Um, The game is much more serious. Of course, it should be. It's a thief's end. Uh, I've heard, you know, some... Hardcore Xbox fans are kind of upset because they feel that they've taken a more serious approach, but it's a much more serious game. Um, the the story isn't convoluted; it's easily followed and digestible. Uh, the 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 puzzles, the way that they're implemented throughout the game, is amazing. There's lots of platforming, lots of platforming. If you really are into that, mm-hmm. you really love the way they implemented so much platforming. They got new dynamics and mechanics, like his I call it the Indiana Jones rope. And you can use to like kind of swing around and get nice. better vantage points, land on people and punch them in the face and snatch their gun out of midair. It's amazing. They got this new mechanic that 
I haven't seen it in any of the other Uncharted games, but I do like the fact that they've added more stuff where you slide down hills a lot to kind of get to where you need to go and you jump at the last second, kind of giving it more of an uh, uh, an air of excitement and, yeah. and just that, that crucial moment. If you don't jump, then you're going to die. And God knows I've died quite a few times, but I've had a great time the entire time. I'm only on Chapter 14. Uh, when my wife flew to New Hampshire, she was on Chapter 17. So I let you I let you know, and she she told me today when I picked her up from the airport, she said, "Did you beat it?" I was like, um, "The the Last of Us happened a couple of times," <laughs> and so she she wanted to smack me. Then I but can't believe man. that you're not getting into into Uncharted's multiplayer. It's, I mean, it's the same developer. It seemed like I can't I believe wanna, you're not like super excited for this. I I, I am. I'm like very I'm very excited, but I for me personally, I don't want to jump into the multiplayer until I until I complete the single. So like. When it comes to that multiplayer experience, plus I got like a group of guys who I always play The Last of Us with, I get that little message popping up, bam, I'm in the middle of dealing with a kid, bam, I go in there, I play one match, you know, it turns into eight. Yeah. You know, and, and then yeah. all of a sudden it's time to go to sleep, and that's what happened to me last night. I played uh, about four or five games of The Last of Us, all the kids, everybody's going to bed, and I was like, okay, let me go ahead and play a little bit of Uncharted 4. I got through one chapter, and then that feeling of dreariness started to come over my eyes and I was watching and then all of a sudden I wasn't and I was watching again. I was like, okay, it's over. Turn it off and I'm going to try to get into it and I'll definitely have it beat by by tomorrow night. Don't want to rush say, through tomorrow. it too much though, right? You know, like well, kind of savor it a little is, bit. This this is the, the longest Uncharted to date. Yeah. Um, this is about a 16 to 18 hour campaign. That's pretty good been, for like, a single player campaign. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. And it has a very, a very robust multiplayer. Um, and I would say definitely don't sleep on the multiplayer. I know you're going to get this game. Uh, it's much faster. It's none of that bitch mom stuff from from uh, that you really love yes. of The Last of Us. <laughs> this this is uncharted. There's just tons of you swinging around the map, shooting people, throwing grenades, bringing in you know this non-player character uh, assistants that jump down and they tank for you and run around and choke people. It's really it's it's an awesome awesome experience. But so far. I don't do the reviews where I go on a scale of 1 to 10, but I would definitely recommend this to anybody with a PlayStation 4. This is the game to show people what PS4s can do. I and heard not only this it, game makes the 90s look like the 60s. <laughs> well, I guess if you look at it that way, yeah. Uh, this, this is definitely um, a showcase game, and, and it's not just a beautiful experience. I will say this, and this is why for anybody who's played this game, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Naughty Dog implemented a very special way of uh, paying homage to an old Naughty Dog game. Oh, really? Don't ruin it. Don't ruin it. it. Not going to. But when it happens to you, just let yeah. me know how loud you scream because we screamed. You know, Kate and I were actually at this time at the same place. And um, damn it, you know, the last time was kind of slowed me down over the course of the next day or two. But at this point, we were at the same place and it was happening simultaneously on her monitor and on my TV. Oh, really? And we, we, yeah, and we both started screaming and losing our shit. Because you think it's one thing, and then all of a sudden it turns into something else. You're like, oh, my God. Naughty Dog is amazing. Neil Druckmann, is, he's an amazing guy. Uh, Bruce Straley. You would think, um, uh, I'm trying to think of her name, um, the, the young lady who left, it's, it, and her name is really um, leaving yeah. me right now. You know who I'm talking either. about. I know who you're talking about, but I can't remember her name. Let us know in the comments. Uh, when she left, a lot of people had doubts as to whether or not Neil Druckmann and Bruce Traley was going to be able to keep this this franchise going strong. And uh, were they going to be able to um, capture that magic that Uncharted has always been? They definitely have. Uh, the characters are all the same. The same lovable characters that we've all, you know, over the last 10 years grown to love. Uh, they look much more real. Of course, that, that Uncharted comedy is everywhere. Everybody's got their witty banter. The The... <laughs> The most the lovable people. mass murderer you ever met. Yeah, he's worse than Jason <laughs> Voorhees, man. He's worse than Jason Voorhees in this game because he he just, you know, he kind of goes at batshit. And her name is Amy Hennig. There she is. Uh, I had to look at my own video to find out. But um, all that stuff, they got some really uh, amazing open world type of sections where you're driving around in a Jeep and they implement it. Um, a little rope that goes on the front of your Jeep and you can kind of get to special areas. It kind of pulls you up. It's just all this amazing stuff they implemented in the game that's just so different from the previous entries. I'm really, really, really enjoying this game. Uh, and like I said, if you have a PS4 and you don't have it, you you owe yourself a service uh, of getting this game. It's definitely worth it. Um, I won't know until I'm completely done with it how they, they you know kind of close up this series and put a bow on it. 
But as it stands right now, the protagonist is awesome. The antagonist is so far, because I know there might be a crazy Uncharted twist, it's right. very believable and kind of scary, right? How many blue uh, dudes and, are uh, there? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't know how many there are in this game. But um, so far, I'm really, really enjoying it. And uh, you guys in the comments, let us know what you think about it. Right now, it's sitting at a 94 on Metacritic, which is the highest score for any game this console generation on Metacritic out of 70 reviews. So it's doing really, really well. And uh, I think it, it definitely deserves those accolades. Now, you need to tell me why the hell, other than the fact that you've been working your ass off, you didn't get this game. That's when it. That's get? why. That's, I just been, <laughs> I've been going hard. So <laughs> Working and driving. Working and driving. <laughs> you know, sometimes. Yeah. I, I'm I, definitely I going to pick it up. I was actually planning on picking it up today, but I just didn't have time to do it. Because uh, I want to, for some reason, I want to get the box copy. I don't even know why I want to get the box copy of this game, but I do want to get the box copy, even though I download most of my games at this point. Um, maybe I'll just bite the bullet and download it tonight and start playing it tonight. Um, I'm really looking forward to it, but I'm also really looking forward to Doom, which came out. And a lot of people were really concerned about Doom because they didn't send any uh, review copies out, which mm -hmm. I found to be pretty interesting. They did like a, they sent them out to influencers, right? Like you know, YouTubers and Twitch streamers. And Very a lot annoying. of times that means that they don't feel too strongly about how well this game is going to get reviewed. Uh, but it turns but. out that this game, <laughs> people are awesome. really loving this game. Uh, it's definitely yeah. got an old school Doom feel to it. I haven't played it. Uh, it's got an old school Doom feel to it. Uh, people are loving the graphics. It looks great on the, on the consoles and on the PC. Um, people are really liking the fact that the combat has a tactical tactical feel to it. Like you can't just go rushing in uh, and just take out everybody. You have to actually kind of play around with the environment, and it's even got a story, which relatively new to the Doom franchise. <laughs> well, well Cl Cliffy B. Cliff uh, Blazinski, yeah, he actually commented on this game, and he said that this is Doom that we know and love ramped up he says actually yeah. a better rendition than what we used to have it has all that old school feel to it but they've added all these new dynamics i was supposed to get it today uh but i ended up you know spending a little bit longer at the airport waiting on my wife to get out mm -hmm. so i'll definitely have it tomorrow um and that's some more multiplayer i'm just dying to get oh the multiplayer is so fun you, oh you uh, yeah you did play I played that. the beta oh, yeah. yeah you know it's it's Unlike any other first-person shooter, if you ask me, the way it feels, the way it moves. Yeah. It's almost like you're on fucking rollerblades playing laser tag or something. It's just so seamless and so fast. Yeah, it just feels 60 good. 60 frames. Yeah, it really, really does. I'm really anxious to see how the story uh, works out because I've always loved Doom just for the, the mindless fun that it was, right? Yeah. And Doom 3 tried to change that, and I think for what it was for that time, Doom 3 did really well. But this seems like, from what I understand, a very cohesive and enjoyable and easy, easily followable story and uh, it, it makes be me like, wonder why they didn't send out review copies you know like yeah you, you know you you've heard that story before right it's like you know yeah. a, a movie will come out or a game will come out and they won't they won't do early press stuff right they just won't do it because they know that it's just going to get panned so like why bother? Or they'll do it em <laughs> they'll do an embargo and the embargo will lift like two days or three days after the actual retail release sure that's right? another another way they go about doing yeah it. yeah so when I started hearing that they did not send out press copies of this game, they did not send out review Excellent. copies, I was like, shit, this game's going to be crappy. It's going to be crappy. And they know it. They know it's going to be crappy. But now to hear that uh, people are actually loving it. The reviews, I just checked Metacritic. Like while you were talking about Uncharted, I, I looked at Metacritic and there's very few like real reviews of it. But the user reviews are in the 80s. Um, and that's good. That's good for Metacritic. People are loving this game. I've talked to a couple of people who have played it. I watched a couple of people, a couple of like kind of, you know, YouTube style reviews of it. People are loving it, and I'm I'm excited because I'm a big Doom fan. The only problem for me is there's just so much to play, and there has to be some end game here, Briar. And I know you probably feel the same way. I don't know if you feel to the same degree because for the most part, you you're focusing on the game that you love. I have a lot of love for a lot of different games. Yeah. Some I, some I love more than others, so I try to grab them all, and it just becomes this cesspool of games, sure. and I get to play like 5%. At, at what point am I going to stop this, right? Because I'm playing Uncharted. Yeah. My back catalog, one of the games I really, really, really want to play is MGS5. I, uh, I play thought you played with, it. No, I didn't play it. Oh, I you played didn't like start first, it? I played like the first hour. Oh, I got I got through like the uh, the horse riding section with this big scary fucking guy okay. chasing me. After that, you know, I, I took a, a hiatus. 
Uh, and now, you know, we got games like Dune coming out that I really want to play. I really want to get into Uncharted's multiplayer. Yeah. And I'm what I just uh, during PlayStation's last sale, I bought four games. I haven't played All any right. of them. I, got, I got a solution. What do I do? What do All I right. Do? We're just gonna run. We're just gonna run. We're gonna get a. We're gonna find. Where's a cheap place to live? Florida. We're gonna meet up in Florida. We're gonna rent some dingy ass apartment. Bring your PlayStation Four and a TV. We'll yeah. just we'll set up. We don't even need chairs. We can just sit back to back and lean on each other. <laughs> That's a plan. So hang our TVs hey. on the wall. We'll just sit there for a month. I don't even think they'll miss us. I don't even think they'll miss us. We don't do shit around here anyway. <laughs> we have proven that we are yeah. completely useless. Completely worthless. Yeah. Right, right. You know, this is the only weekend I've actually proven my worth. You know? so. We'll come home and they'll be like, go back. Yeah. Did you bring the milk? <laughs> It's just such a daunting reality, right? Yeah. It's like, oh my god! And now I'm starting to do the same thing for my kids. You know, there I got Brandon GTA Five for PS4 for his birthday. And that was a game he's been wanting. I got it for him yesterday. They started playing that, and then I went to GameStop. I went and got him Battle uh, Star for, Star Wars Battlefront. Yeah, brought that home and sat it in front of the TV. And they said, "Oh, is that for us, Dad?" I said, "Yeah." I said, "Thanks." They kept playing it, and right before they left, just now their mom picked them up. So how you guys like Battlefront? He said, oh, Dad, we haven't got a chance to play that yet. We'll probably uh, play it in a day or two, hopefully. But right now, we're, and so now they have a back catalog. I'm like, hold oh, I'm setting them up for the same failures that I'm doing. Hey, what are you going to do? It's a good problem to have, man. When I was a kid, I had like one game a year, right? Yeah. I played the yeah, shit I out of too. that game. <laughs> you remember? Oh, man, Nintendo games gave you the best uh, replay value because you could never beat those fucking Yeah, that's true. It would take me like a year to beat Ninja Gaiden. I was like, this is the hardest game ever. Ninja Gaiden 2 came out. That was for a whole nother year. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, those those were the days. Now they get more games and they know what to do with. Speaking of games that kids are playing nowadays, please tell me you tried Slither IO on on your uh, Uh, I No, I haven't checked that out yet. I've seen it, but I haven't tried it yet. It looks like kind of snaky, but... Like kind of, it's good. Is it? It's really good. I got it's, so I, I got addicted to what was the one with the, is it Agaria, the one yeah, with the yeah. balls, and you try and eat the other balls. I got addicted to that for like three days. I swear to God, it was like an alcoholic having like a, like a blackout. Relax. Right? It's like, it's like I, I lost time during that episode. <laughs> it was like a UFO abducted. You right. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I sat down to play this three days ago. <laughs> It was Monday. <laughs> now it's fucking Thursday. <laughs> so I'm a little I, scared how, of it. <laughs> that's how I feel about this game, Slither IO. It's it's very, it's one of the most addicting. And see, I've never talked about like tablet or phone games. It's even on the phones too, iOS and Android. I've never played a game like this that's really got me that addicted to it. I played it at work. I played it on my phone. I played it while I was waiting on Kate to come from the airport. Yeah. You're this. You're the snake. You start off really small, and, and there's like little Pac-Man balls everywhere. And every time you touch one, you get longer and longer and longer. And uh, there's there's four to five hundred people per lobby, so it's a lot of people playing in this one little global area. And so you see these giant snakes go past you, and you're like, holy shit! It's like Star Wars, right? A star destroyer go by, and in order to kill them, you have to make their head run into your body, so you can like kind of maneuver around them. If they run into your body. Then they basically explode. And they drop the a bunch pattern. of orbs. And, and yeah, you get those and you get big as hell. And that's yeah. when you feel like you're the shit. And you walk, you're going around, you see all these little tiny bitches next to you, and they all want you. And they and you got out think I'm like, oh, this is such a good game. <laughs> now, not to brag because it's probably nothing, but I got to sixteen thousand in length. So the and genius pr- about this game over Agario is in Agario, you got to a certain point where you're so big that you were almost yeah. unbeatable, right? Yeah. I mean, unless you were just you made a dumb mistake. There's, yeah. there was a technique I started to use where I'd, I just like kind of drift away from a corner. Then like I was so fucking big that I could see like you know this huge corner, but all the little guys they couldn't see that I was near that corner. They'd go in you know start feeding on stuff and then I'd just come in and push into that corner I'll... and they had no escape because I just like took up the whole fucking thing <laughs> and I just like I got so big that I couldn't be beat. In Agario, yeah. a little guy could take out a big guy. Doesn't matter how big you are, if you run into something, you're dead. Like it's a one shot kill thing, or I'm sorry, in Slither, uh, Slither, yes, Slither IO. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's the scary part because you can double tap depending on if you play on PC. Because I have <laughs> played it on PC too. I'll play on PC if you just hold down your mouse, you'd like double your speed, 
Uh-huh. And that way you can kind of get around people real fast and kind of trick them into running into you. Yeah. But the, the, the longer you hold that, you got little balls dripping off of you, leaving a trail behind you, actually getting smaller. So they've implemented some really interesting tactics in this game, and I'm really addicted. It's, it's a hell of a feeling when you see a big snake and you go all the way around them and you uh, engulf them and you're in a big circle around them. Yeah. And you just keep closing in on like, yeah, bitch, you're lunch. All of a sudden, <laughs> boom, a big ass explosion of balls inside. Oh, that didn't sound right. It sounds just right to me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a very fun game. I implore you if you get a chance. That's the other game I've been playing this week. It's been Uncharted, The Last of Us, because my wife has been gone. Normally she kicks me off of that. And Slither IO, every chance I get, it's a very, very addicting game, man really really fun i think you'll like it i think i think it would do really well on playstation 4 and xbox one believe it or not yeah, i don't know why they don't bring those games to they, it would do really yeah. well for like I a mean, few they, bucks like if they put them on the like playstation store for like a couple bucks oh god i'd buy it i'd buy I'd it, buy it. it. For 10 or bucks, on I'd the on the uh vita which you know is you know my least favorite paperweight at this point <laughs> yeah well nobody uses it i think mine is in here some well, this that's my other vita um i don't know where it's that, but yeah, mine has been depleted of power probably for the last month. Right, I I did. I stopped. I used to have. I have a charger for it, right? That mm -hmm. it just sits on. Uh, but I unplugged the charger. But I'm like, why am I wasting battery on? It? Like, why am I wasting electricity on this thing? I never, I never take it off the charger. I need to save money on my electric bill. Just unplug this shit. Yeah, my Vita is. Uh, it's effectively right now a paperweight. I don't know what to say. It makes me I'm, sad. It's, it's such a cool piece of hardware. It's such it a has nice piece such of kit. A great possibilities. Yeah, but. Um, and I hate playing they, uh, games on cell phones. I don't like using touchscreen controls. Same here. Like so, you know, that's why I love my iPad. You know, I got the iPad Air too. It's pretty big, and you know, I can kind of play Slither IO. But that's like the only game that, for me, touch touch controls kind of works. Sorry, guys, we've kind of been taken over by Android and iOS gaming for a moment. Right. <laughs> but it's gaming and it's fun. If you if you guys have ever not tried Slither IO, please try it. Please. Did you see Wilson's comment in the chat? No. I'm 1,600 in length on a good day. <laughs> oh, yeah, I heard that. Before. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. The only thing about Slither IO that I think they should do, they should uh, implement a way that you can actually invite people to play in the same lobby with people you know. Yeah. That can would, you customize your character like you can in Agario? Yeah. yeah. They just uh, uh, released a new patch, and you can make your, your snake look however you want. And, and I like the way that you can kind of change your name for each match, and you can troll the hell out of people. Just scare people. Like, I, I've named myself so many times, I'm going to fuck you up. And I spell fuck with P-H-U-K, so they can't really, you know, tag Damn, it. So vulgar. They have no clue what so that means. So vulgar. Yeah. On the or internet? Say, on the internet? Really? You know, there's yeah. kids on the internet. No. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Is that what my you kids are doing? can't be swearing on the internet like that. Oh, God. Jesus what year is this? Jesus Christ. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so... I obviously I've been internet internetless, so I haven't been playing much of anything. I should have taken the opportunity to play uh, Uncharted because you don't need internet to play Uncharted, uh, but I didn't. I was doing yard work because you know my wife uh, basically is boss. Uh, but I did get this little cool piece of kit. Oh, the the two the S. Yeah, the S version. So the difference with this, this is a new Elgato game capture card, and I thought it was interesting because. Instead of doing a lot of compression in the box and sending you the video to your PC in a delayed format, this thing is more set up for streaming, does less compression, uh, but gives you instant video. So for streaming, where you want to, you know, you you want to get your, you know, your video and your audio and your webcam and you know your microphone all synced up. This is like uh, Elgato's new solution for that. So I've been playing with this thing, and I'll uh, I'll be doing I'll probably do some kind of review or some kind of overview yeah. about it now, in the future. I got the original Elgato, and I've got the HD sixty. Right. The, the two of the, and I got the original for older stuff, you know, Nintendo sixty four, Dreamcast, and everything like that, because you can use the S video converter to convert old. I have all uh, three too. Yeah. Yep. Now, are there any cons to the S compared to the HD sixty? Yeah. So the. There are a few cons. Uh, one is you need to have USB 3.0, uh, and you need to have a USB 3.0 that is not being used by other stuff. So when you have a USB you know, port on your computer, it's often you've often got like four ports all run into like one basically, you know, mm -hmm. one line, right? 
Uh, this thing uses so much bandwidth on your USB port that for me, if I had it next to my microphone, Ooh. something was going to get fucked up. Like my microphone or my my game audio was getting fucked up. So it's like this thing really needs it needs bandwidth. Um, okay. The other thing is this thing, uh, if you're just doing like YouTube videos, if you just want to record, it seems that the HD60 is better than this for that because this is letting your computer do the work whereas the hd60 is doing the work for you right for your computer so this mm -hmm. is going to be better for streamers the s is going to be good better for streamers the hd60 is going to be better for youtubers okay um and obviously if you're playing older games where you need analog inputs then the, the original hd game capture hd is wh where you want to stick so all yeah. three they're still selling all three versions of it now, now, what are the price differentials? I know that... Uh, this was 180 is... brand new. Okay, well, that's what I paid for the 60. But it's... A di it's, it's, it's been a year. It's, it's a different device. A it's a different device, and it's the HD60 is not obsolete. It's useful in a different way. Gotcha. You know, this is really... So what, what... You don't want to be making YouTube videos with this. You want to be streaming with this. Streaming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm sure that uh, our friend Not Too Nerdy Entertainment... I know you're out there watching... He's going to have the uh, HD 60 S pretty soon because he's a uh, big into streaming just like you. And for my inevitable inauguration into game streaming, I'll probably have to grab one too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, streaming is a lot of fun. It's, it's amazing how much I've, I've come to enjoy streaming at this point. So for me, I mean the real, the real answer for me is going to be to get a gaming PC or a, a streaming PC is what I should call it. Uh, that, you know, has the power to, to do all this stuff because right now i'm doing it on a mac that has windows loaded onto it and it's it's a fucking nightmare man <laughs> <laughs> it's a goddamn nightmare <laughs> i can only imagine man and uh for the guys who are wondering what's happening to our format nothing is happening to our format we're actually swapped with old news and that, that we pretty much know everybody's no heard and talked about uh and i'm looking at it now there's really not much that's happened this week other than the, uh, of course, awesome, awesome launch of uh, Uncharted and Doom, which we've kind of already hit on. Yeah. Games that we're both super excited about. Uh, but some other smaller things have happened this week. Uh, of course, we got more news and, and rumors about the Xbox Next, what Microsoft could be possibly uh, talking about at E3. They're talking about a new console, not an Xbox 1.5, but actually a new console that is supposedly... Four times as powerful as the PlayStation 4K. So really? This is yes. This is what they're talking about uh, in the rumor mill. I actually uh, did a video on it this morning. When it's would they release yet. that? Uh, they're talking 2017, but this is supposed so to be year. the X, the Xbox One successor. This is not an the, Xbox. So the Xbox upgrade. Two. Next, yeah, they're calling it the next or the Xbox <laughs> Two. So that's fucking it's, confusing. It's, it's very, yes, it is, isn't it? You know, I hate when I talk about my original. See how I'm, how I'm saying it? The original Xbox? Yeah. You know, the I Xbox, the original OG. Xbox. Yeah, the OG. <laughs> it's next to the 360 and it's next right. to the one. It's just very, very confusing. Uh, other little bits of news is that Disney has quit the game making business and they're canceling the Disney Infinity franchise. I, I got to uh, tell you, I'm actually bummed about this. I've never yeah. played Disney Infinity, but I love those little figurines. I've actually yeah, I've got, I've got a group on my desk Amiibo. somewhere. It's, I think it's covered by covered by cables. <laughs> but I've got a he's group. Holding, he's holding them up. Yeah, right? it's just a little it's just a little okay. mini figure of a group. And I've seen other ones that I loved. I don't play the games. I've heard it's good as far as Toys to Life games go. So I'm a little disappointed to to see yeah, it well, disappear. Uh, but apparently, it's, it's all because of the finances. They only made two hundred million dollars in the Infinity franchise last year. Yeah. And they didn't see that as enough to continue on with it. They do have two more packs coming out. Uh, they have the Alice, the new Alice in Wonderland pack, and they also have uh, um, Finding Dory. And those are the last two. They'll be coming out in the next two weeks. But after that, there's no more Disney Infinity. That's actually more reason for people to actually go out and probably get some of these figures because over the next couple of years, they could probably have a say, have a huge spike in value. You know, yeah, they, they had movies. Marvel characters. They had yeah. uh, movie characters from the Disney franchises. They had animated characters. They had a lot of characters in there. Um, my kids liked them. I, you know, I thought like just 
I never having played it, just seeing it from the surface, it looked to me like one of the better versions of this toy to life thing. Um, but I do know that like one. Lego entered the market, like entered that same market last year. And from what I've heard is that like the, it's not a growing thing. It's like Skylanders kind of started it, then everybody else joined in. But instead of like the pie getting bigger, it just cut the pie into four plus <laughs> four slices, mm -hmm. and everybody was sharing the pie. So it's sad to see Disney go, but you know, I guess they'll probably just have other people develop video games based on their franchises in the future. Yeah, they they still got some partnerships out there, but it's it's more second tier, not so much out in the forefront, really publishing anymore. Uh, I want but, some Star Wars games though. Disney well, owns Star are... Wars. I want some Star Wars games. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, what's the name of the developer that made um, uh, Titanfall? Respawn. They're making a, um, a Star Wars game, a, a third-person action adventure. Really? Star Wars game right now. That's Disney interesting. Out. Yeah, they are, as well as Amy Hennig's Star Wars game. So they're actually two independent studios working on Star Wars right now for Disney. And, of course, I'm more excited for Amy Hennig's. Star Wars game because of the way her mind works. She's just a very uh, just imaginative person, and, and you can see what she's kind of crafted with the Uncharted series. Yeah, but yeah, they're they're definitely moving forward with it. I was really interested a few years ago into seeing in seeing that Star Wars thirteen thirteen game that apparently right. looked like it was the one that got canceled. The that looked damn good, man. Um, anything in my mind that's as good as the Knights of the Old Republic, I'm in on. You know. That oh was man, great... I'd love to see another note Coder come out. Oh yeah. <laughs> Got Love it. to see it, that. It, it, a spiritual successor or even Knights of the Old Republic 3. Yeah. That would be mind-blowing. Hell, just you know? be, Bioware, get the franchise again. Do it. That'd be awesome. Wow. I don't know God, how, was... how successful you think KOTOR was. KOTOR, I know KOTOR was successful. Part Knights of the Old Republic was successful. successful yeah. yeah, but the second yeah. one I heard was not nearly as not successful. So and that's what kind of yeah. killed it. But I, heard, yeah. I know a lot of people love that game. They love KOTOR, too. Oh, man. Uh, see, I got... I, Knights of the Old Republic 2, I didn't like nearly as much. I didn't even beat it. Uh, it, it just For me, the story kind of fell a little bit further oh, really? from the first. The first game was just so so believable. It had so much real information about the worlds. You just felt like you were really visiting these places and yeah. learning more about these races and stuff. All the, the abilities, the, the the light side of the force versus the dark side, all that stuff was just so... And you, you kind of you chose organic. for yourself. Yeah, like you, you really did. You really you felt really like you were making that choice. Or, and based yeah. on the way you played, it influenced your, your alignment, which it was a cool yeah, game. It, it influenced the way you look, everything. You know, the darker you got, you got all these crazy veins and your eyes are turning red, all kinds of stuff. And you think about it, you know, now it doesn't seem like that much of a huge change, but... Back in those days, it was huge and kind of world moving that they had so many small little tidbits of information, uh, you know, going through that game. You know, it was just organically, it was really, really awesome. I think that game came out on Android and iOS, if I'm if I'm correct. I, I think, think you're right. Kotor, Kotor came out on iOS. And I wouldn't play that. It would drive me nuts trying to play that in a touch form. But yeah, you know, it, it it would it would suck just as. Have bad you ever as tried out one of those controllers for like Android phones or or iPhones, like the little. You know, they're like little controllers. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. No, I haven't. I have not. I might pick but, one of those up because there's so many games that look interesting on, you know, I, I use iPhone. I know you use Android, but it, it doesn't really matter what platform. There's no, so many let, games let's that correct, look. Let's correct this now because Uncharted uh, 4 is out. Let's correct this. I don't use just any Android phone. Uh -huh. Now that Uncharted 4 is out, I can say with pride that I use the same fucking phone that Nathan Drake uses. Absolutely true. The same phone. And you know what? It made me feel even better. There's parts of the game where he pulls out the phone and you got to take pictures and stuff. Yeah. And it just felt so real to me because uh -huh. it's the same phone, the same image, the same everything. I told my kids, this is my fucking phone. Nathan Drake is the man. They've got so many damn Sony references in this game. <laughs> it's really, really awesome. And, and the way they did Uncharted 4, you'll know, you know for a fact. Well, you can pretty much guess and, and, and speculate that it'll never go to any other console because of all the damn Sony. There's so much Sony crap. Oh, there's, no yeah, there's no way. There's no way. I don't. It, it's worse than Quantum Break. How every car is a Nissan. Oh, I'm really? surprised they didn't have Sony cars in this damn game. It's just so much Sony stuff going on. So I'm sure really they awesome. got paid like a million dollars to do that, all that branding. How much are you getting paid? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, uh, back to the controllers. I've heard that those <laughs> controllers have gotten a lot better. Right? Is that like they they've started to really feel like Xbox or PlayStation controllers. Which is great really? news, right? So, like, you can just clip them onto your phone. 
Bluetooth? I think they are Bluetooth, uh, which makes me think there's probably a little bit of intrinsic lag, lag uh, which would be a bummer. But like, if you were playing like just a simple platformer or something, you'd get used to it. You know, as long as it wasn't too big. I mean, the PlayStation Four controller uses Bluetooth. I would buy, believe it or not, I would buy a controller just for Slither IO. Yeah. Just for that. Just for that game. Uh, I'd probably play really the, well with an analog controller too. Oh, uh, you know, I, I plug my PS4 controller into my PC and I was playing it with that. Mm-hmm. And I got this crazy generic setup because for some reason my OB, uh, OBS does not work. Because no, no, that's not think, just you. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's fucking everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work, okay? Whenever I, I turn it on, it's like a black screen. I can get the audio. It's just crap. Uh-huh. My old computer worked, it worked fine. And so now whenever I, I try to use OBS, I get nothing. So I use this kind of workaround where I plug my computer into my Xbox One. Yeah. And my Xbox One is plugged into my television. And I just go to TV through there. And yeah. I'm able to plug the usb from the xbox one into my computer and just record gameplay through my elgato like normal yeah even though it's actually coming from my pc and i plugged my ps4 controller in and i played it that way and it felt so natural and great yeah i was owning people they need to bring slither io to ps4 and xbox one 2.99 five dollar game you know give people the options to buy new skins and stuff make the world bigger add some new you know mechanics it's a no-brainer the game is very very addicting that's if you got five minutes to waste, you're going to waste it playing Slither IO. I tell you that. Yeah, those are fun games. Those are fun games. I haven't played Slither, but I played the other two, Agario, and I can't remember what the other one was. The, the funny thing about this is because I never play phone or Android games, Android or tablet games, I should say. Um, and my daughter Nova walked up to me. She said, "Dad, can you try this game?" And I was like, Ugh. "You know, she's five years old. I'm like, I don't want to really. What's this going to be? A making a cake or something?" She said, no, you're a snake. This game is Slither.io. And then she handed me her tablet. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what, what am I doing here? And all of a sudden, it clicked. I was like, this is the best game ever. It's so good. It's not as good as Uncharted 4. It's good. <laughs> it's good. Uncharted we'll see, we'll see if you're still playing it in like two weeks. Yeah, well, I've been playing it now consistently for over a week. And yeah. it's still just good. Yeah, it's, I played it every single day for a week. Do you still day. play Minecraft? I know you got in a Minecraft kick for a while. Do you ever play Minecraft anymore? <laughs> I played it last week. I played it. Uh, yeah, my wife and I. We got. We're we're actually building a skating rink. No oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the world that I created is, is some really huge shit. You would you'd be shocked at some uh-huh. of the stuff that we we made. So oh, I wouldn't be shocked. Tra- I, I've seen what my kids have built, and then I've even gone online and see like you know they have like uh, time lapse videos of like communities yeah. building stuff. It's it's insane. It's insane. Yeah, it's an, it's really yeah, impressive. Um, Minecraft is a very very. Uh, it, to me, it's kind of like therapy, man. Yeah. Because sure. uh, what, what we were talking about, this is what kind of got us started doing this. We were talking about some of the places that existed years ago that we used to go to that have been torn down. Uh huh. I think there's a ghost like in the local S and M club, things like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but we were talking about you know the skating rinks and all these different places throughout our history that no longer exist. The place we used to work at when we first met. Yeah. We were like, why don't we just remake these places in, in Minecraft and kind of go in there and enjoy that atmosphere? Because believe it or not, it really is therapeutic to me to go into my Minecraft version of my grandmother's house, which is not there anymore. Uh-huh. You know, it feels it feels the same. I, I just get that same haunted, spooky ass feeling that I got when I went to my grandma's house. You know, and I've gone to every house I've lived in. I've got them all on one street in Minecraft. It's really, really that's kind of cool. <laughs> it really is, man. Yeah. I mean. The house I grew up in, you know, uh, the, the Kate's house she grew up in that I never saw before. When she walks me through it, I just get this whole nostalgia feeling. And it's really, to me, it's therapy. And whenever I just want to be a badass in Minecraft, I go to the high school, Lincoln High School from The Last of Us. Yeah. I built that. And that's fucking bad. It took us a week and a half to make it. Really? It is huge. It is huge. When I say it's huge, it has every aspect of the real game there. There are school buses outside. There's torches in certain places. There's like two floors. There's hidden rooms. There's a gymnasium. Does it have a Every pedophile class- woodshop teacher? Uh, no. Oh, okay. But that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> what school did you go to there, Brian? <laughs> Just <laughs> like the real thing. <laughs> Holy shit. We'll get spanked. Yeah, uh, but Minecraft is still a, a lot of fun to me. Uh, I enjoy games that allow you to explore your creativity, man. Yeah, yeah. I like, I like a game... Not all games should do that, but some games, they, they'll kind of give you a blank canvas and say, make what you want to make, you know, kind of like Mario Maker. 
You know, make make mm-hmm. your Mario game, and, and that's a game I still haven't played yet. Oh God, it's, you got to check that game out. Do you have Do you have that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. So damn, if you bought it, I don't have it. I feel like a fucking idiot. Well, I I bought it for my kids, and uh, they actually didn't open it. It was a like Christmas present. They didn't open it, and I I was the one who opened it. <laughs> like, just, ever- it was like just sitting there for like a month. I'm like, fuck it, I'll, I'll play it. <laughs> reason i didn't buy it and i know a lot of people in the comments are gonna say beastly it's not an excuse i just feel bad about my wii u now i really do it's like when i look at it it's like it's depressing there's really not a lot on there that i'm enjoying and even well, their this, latest this game for, is good mario maker know, is hot i trust me i know it's a good game right but i just feel like there's a handful of them and it, they don't justify for me what that system could have been and, and that's really not an excuse i, I just feel like almost say that this game is worth the price of a Wii U. <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, it's it's really good. Okay, well, just on that that alone, I'll buy it. Wow. Wow. Now, I, I've never really watched any videos on it. I know you can create your own worlds, but can yeah, you share those Yeah, it's super easy. Yeah, like you, you share them online. Like you yep. the big planet and stuff? Yep, you can oh, get wow. a code and share them with your friends specifically. So, like, if I was making a level and I wanted to, like, challenge you to beat it, uh, I could do that. Or vice versa. You can just share so it them publicly, the- like so I could like create a video. Like I could, I could make a video. This is something I should do actually. Is I should, uh, if you you could make a video showing off your level, right, and then have the code so that anybody who watched the video could boot it up and play it, right, in the in the oh wow, like in the uh, description of the video. Damn, that's a great idea. Isn't that cool? I just wow. saw that. Just like that. I'm like that's an idea man. Awesome. They come to me fast. You got to keep give, up. Give you got to you got to be fast give to keep up. <laughs> Wow, that, that really does sound. There's uh, probably very, fucking very three thousand dudes doing that right now. <laughs> yeah, probably so. But you know, that's a great way to build an audience, man. I, you know, you create something and people want to be a part of it. Right. I've I've had tons of people watch my Minecraft The Last of Us game, uh, the, the Last of Us High School, and they've all hit me in the comments saying, "Beastly, can I come in there and play with you?" And I'm like, "Yeah." I don't really don't know how to do that without allowing a whole bunch of people to come in here and just tear, burn this motherfucker down. Yeah, I don't, I don't know want how people to, do to that burn either. down my high school, man. And so. That's the thing. When Kate and I were building it, every now and then, before I would tweak the Minecraft uh, options, it would say, blankety blank has joined. I'm like, holy shit, who is this person? Where the hell are they? Are they destroying something? Then I'd fly up high in the air and look around like I was Superman looking for Zod. Then I'd finally find the option to kick them the hell out of my <laughs> my, my world. So <laughs> that's the thing. Uh, so that, that sounds a lot more, um, I guess, user-friendly you know, to allow people to come in there and they can't really alter your world. No, they just play it like it's a Mario level. Fucking awesome. Wow. Yeah, but you've, that, to post it, you've got to be able to beat it yourself. So you can't post anything that's so hard that you can't beat it. Although there's ways oh. around that because you can just put like a secret, you know, right at the beginning. Yeah, like a secret warp that... <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, that's fucking crazy. But that's, wow. that's cheesy. I think that's mean. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so... For me, so far, when it comes to the Wii U, there have been two standout games that I've had. Now, I know Toad Treasure Tracker is a good game. I know there have been a few good games out there. Splatoon, these two games I don't have. But the games that I do have on the Wii U that I really, truly feel are trendsetters and really amazing games that can go head-to-head with what we see on the Xbox One and PS4. Smash Brothers yeah. and, Bayonetta, and Bayonetta 2. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. Those games are... Honestly, the, the only reason I really have my, my Wii U at this point is because of those games. Mm-hmm. Bayonetta 2 is such a... Do you have that game? No, I did, I did not pick that game up yet. I, well, I'm going, I'm going to mail it to you and, and let you take as long as you need, but I want you to try it so you can mm-hmm. see what I'm talking about. Uh, it, even working on this giant uh, you know, World War One controller, it somehow works flawlessly. The control mm-hmm. scheme is great. I actually the, the like that controller. I like the, the gamepad. I do. Well, I, mean, I don't think it's a bad c- controller per se as far as, you know, the tactile feel to it. Yeah. But it's just very against the grain from what I'm used to. Yeah. You know, it's just big. Yeah. And, I don't and, mind like, it, though. Play- when I'm playing with it, I forget about it. I mean, I'm trying to imagine. I know there's Tekken on this thing. I'm trying to imagine playing a Tekken or, or a Street Fighter or something on here. It just seems like You play Tekken extreme. like I do. Yeah, this is how you got <laughs> to play it like this. <laughs> yeah, you have to play it like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but hopefully, at, at least with Nintendo, they kind of give us more of an option with this new controller. Kind of go back to, 
I guess the old Super Nintendo style controller size, you know. I never Instead had a problem people- with the one that's on the Wii U. The, the major problem for me on the Wii U was just the fact that there was not a whole lot of games for it that I wanted to play. Uh, Mario Maker, uh, Mario Kart. You know, I did like Mario Kart. Um, you know, yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a big Super Smash Brothers fan, so like, I do I understand the achievement of that game. I you know I understand its appeal. It's just not a game for me. Absolutely. But no Zelda, no Metroid. It's kind of a oh, bummer. Oh, God. That's a, you know? that, man, that is a crime. Yeah. That's a crime. You know, I, I want Nintendo to get more deals like they used to have with companies like Capcom. Remember when Resident Evil 4 was a Nintendo exclusive? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, stuff like that. If they're able to really, you know, do some political maneuvering out there and, and get in the good graces of some of these companies, they can make this NX thing amazing. That now, Wii version of RE4 is still a really good version of that Oh, game. yeah. It, like, it's it, a fun way to play it. It is, man. It's really, really, really good. Uh, the thing is, I want them to, to be great. I, I, just, I was reading kind of um, more rumors about the NX today because, you know, every five minutes there's a new rumor by a trusted source. Yeah. But um, the new rumor is that this thing doesn't have x86 architecture. Oh, that's kind of a bummer. They're going to something else. Uh, and they're saying that the raw power is more uh, comparable to the Xbox One and not the PlayStation 4. Oh, that's uh, a super big it, bummer. And if it's not x86, it could spell real doom for Nintendo at this Man, point. And they're going to be behind the times again, and they're not going to have easy port access. When my video comes out this week, I don't know which day it's going to go out because I do all my. I just did twelve Last of Us videos and like ten news videos. Listen to what I'm saying in the video, and it's true. It's like Nintendo has the advantage that nobody else ever has, but they shit on their advantage every time. Yeah. They've seen. They saw two years ago what PlayStation 4 was capable of, and the Xbox One. They've had two years to study the competition. They know exactly what these consoles are capable of. And by now, standards, the PS4 and the Xbox One are very dated technology. Yeah, They have the, they have the advantage of time travel. They know what the competition is, so why would they come out less than par? Why would they come know. out and, and possibly have a console, once again, that's not as powerful as their competition? It's just, to me, it's an injustice as a company, to know what you're going against years in advance and still go against the grain. To not have x86 architecture, that's no, third parties are going to have a real issue porting good games to them. I was hoping, you know? man, I, I'll Why be honest with you, that? I was really hoping for x86 architecture and I was hoping for something more powerful than the the even the, the PS 4.5 or the PS 4K. I was really hoping for that, man. I would they love to see that from Nintendo. Um, you know, I'd love to be playing Destiny 2 on a Nintendo platform. I'll, I'd love it, you know. Um, it's, it's like a real bummer. It's like it's like watching NASCAR for two years, and you're watching, and, and you're, you you see the fastest racers. You know, I don't know shit about NASCAR. I'm just using a hypothetical. Mm-hmm. You see who the best racers are out there. They're the best at turning left. Mm-hmm. So best after left two turners years, in the world. God damn it! <laughs> and so you're gearing up to get, go to NASCAR. Uh huh. And then they're like, here comes Beastly Gamer. And I come out there and I'm on a fucking bike. Yeah. Or, or a moped or something. But this motherfucker you... can turn right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. It's over. It's over. <laughs> I, oh, that was so good. <laughs> this motherfucker can turn right. That would be my fucking slogan when I come out. Right out the fucking exit door. Yeah, man. Back I was asking know. you in the uh, comments. Do you stream? No, I don't. Uh, I'm I'm uh, mainly a, a strictly YouTuber. I don't have a lot of time to do streaming, to be quite honest. Right now, I do most of my videos during the weekend because I'm I have such a heavy workload. I run a laboratory throughout. Say what? You pound them out. Yeah, man. I, I have to. You know, yeah. usually Saturday is my day uh, to go through my news and 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 do a lot of editing and just let that shit happen. Uh, and, and sometimes throughout the week, I'll find time to do more videos. But throughout the week, you know, i got a family, four kids, a beautiful wife. I say beautiful because she watches the show. Um, and, and sometimes uh, it's really hard for me to find that extra little bit of time. You know, sometimes I come home and the family might want to watch a movie or, you know, I might want to spend a little time playing a particular game. Yeah. And it sometimes it doesn't work itself out. But I have streamed before, but I'm just not. I don't have the time to do it exclusively right now, but yeah. who knows? You know, once the YouTube thing really takes off, I'll be streaming all the time. I, and that's I'll tell I'll be- you, man, it, is, it has increased my enjoyment of my playtime. When I play video games and I'm not streaming, it feels like something's missing. It's weird. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm. It's like 
sex and then you take away the other partner right oh man it's totally open. like that's a perfect analogy <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what to do with myself anymore yeah. well, you're still kind of getting to the same end here but i don't know this wasn't the same <laughs> just lonelier and sadder <laughs> That's perfect. Oh, That's perfect. I'm totally gonna show. steal that. <laughs> oh man! And see, this to me, the the Beastly Thought Show guys. This is my moment to stream. This is my moment to kind of be free with you guys and, and give you guys my thoughts on gaming in the world. I get to share it with my best friend, Briar Rabbit. Uh, it's just a really important <laughs> part of my week. I mean, throughout the week, I spend a lot of time bullshit at work and handling family business. Yeah, sure. But my Sundays. Is, Today, I, I told Briar before the show, you guys may have noticed we were a little bit late. My <laughs> wife flew in from um, New Hampshire today. She's been gone all weekend. I've been taking care of the kids, cooking, cleaning, doing all the wife stuff. And so she came in, and she's really tired. She's been up all morning, so she came straight to bed. I'm out there in the kitchen cooking up food, peeling potatoes, putting Salisbury steak together, throwing stuff in the oven, getting things ready. And the whole time, Briar's calling me, Beasley, where the fuck are you? <laughs> so I, I came I was getting all pissy, right? I was getting all pissy, and then we start the show, man. I'm in an awesome Bam. mood now. Awesome mood. Yeah. <laughs> I love doing this show. It's one of my highlights yeah. of my week. Yeah, <laughs> this, this is honestly one of my highlights, definitely, of the week, and, and it makes me feel really good to to be a part of something so awesome, and thank you guys for being a part of this as well. Yeah. Uh, it makes it really makes it work. I would do it if we were just sitting here bullshitting and talking we did. to each other. <laughs> we did. We sure did. Yeah. If you guys don't believe us, check out BC, uh, BC Thoughts episode two. Right. Check that shit out. Yeah. That's my channel. That was before either of us had lights, and I looked like Shadow Man. Uh, we were doing a, we were doing a Skype eyes. call uh, on a, my Xbox. I was recording the Xbox. We we're we we're doing Skype on Xbox. I was recording the Xbox with a PBR. And that's how we did this show for episode two. <laughs> and, and I didn't have any lights. You know, nope. I'd never done anything like this before. And I sat by the window. And as the sun went down, my black ass disappeared. You're the most literal version of a black guy. Yeah. All you can see is my eyes and my teeth. It was scary. It was like literal. <laughs> it was literal black. Yeah. I looked like this couch. It was over. <laughs> and I watched it years later. I'm like, holy shit. I couldn't I turn on a lamp or something. Yeah. Yeah, I was super I was super black. But it was still fun, man. And we talked to each other and had a great time and I don't think anybody fucking watched and I didn't even care. <laughs> I, I still kinda don't. <laughs> like I just have a fun time doing it, so I'm gonna keep doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what's up. That's really what's up. Yeah. How's my new scuff? Uh it's not that new. It's good. Well, I'm real. I'm really concerned with po not concerned, but uh, contemplating grabbing a scuff. My PlayStation Four uh, controller is really crapping out on me now. Yeah, it doesn't want to charge. Yeah, and so did you try replacing it, the cable? Yeah, I'm, yes. It's not the cable. <laughs> no, it's not the cable. It's uh, it it just for some reason it, it'll charge when it wants to. I'll leave it on all night and I'll come back and it's charged. But during the day it'll go dead and I'll plug it in and it'll still it'll turn orange and then it'll turn blue and it'll stay blue and it'll be off i'm like holy shit what's going on so i may be upgrading real soon possibly getting a scuff i'm surprised that playstation didn't take the xbox route and create a more uh well it's a good time to buy a scuff they just they just announced i don't know if they're selling it yet or if uh if if they only announced it but they just at least announced a new version of the scuff for ps4 uh, it's got some nice features too it's got removable thumbsticks so you can take the thumbsticks off like easily uh, and replace mm -hmm. them with different lengths. Uh, I think it's got trigger stops. It's like a brand new version of the scuff for PS4. So it's actually a really good time to buy one. Is it better than this? Than this scuff? That's not a scuff. That's a controller with a picture of Chun Li's crotch. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> makes me it's, makes me a little don't uncomfortable. Don't tell me what it makes you. <laughs> just just be that. Just feel that. This is actually a PlayStation 2 controller. It's never been opened, and it's been signed by the Capcom team. Nice. Uh, and uh, this is the anniversary edition. I bought this thing 22 years ago. Damn. Yeah, or 20 years ago. Right around there. I know uh, I know. it was, I want to say, oh, it was 18 years ago, 98. What game was it? What Street uh, Fighter version was out for I, PlayStation 2? 
Was it? There's like so many Street Fighters. Was it Street Fighter Alpha Three? It was Alpha. Yeah, Alpha One and Alpha Two came out, and uh, this has never been opened. You guys can see this. <laughs> It's just her crotch. Doing, she's doing what girls do. And for the guys who don't know what girls do, this is what they do. All day. And they cook, true. too. That's right. And I love this. It's mostly thing. pillow fights <laughs> and cooking. <Yeah. laughs> pillow fights? Yeah, they, feel, they pillow fight quite a fucking bit. Oh, my God. Yeah, but... Uh, <laughs> I don't know I'm what so we talked about on this podcast, but I had a good time doing good it. Time. <laughs> I sure did. That's that's all we do, right? We could, yeah. We we talk about a whole bunch of crap, but for the most part, we had a good time talking about it, and we hope that you guys enjoyed listening to it. Sound off in the comment section below if you're on uh, the the uh, Twitch page. Let Brian know how much you love him by sending him a whole bunch of love emojis. And if you're watching this on YouTube, comment below and tell us what you think about the show. What? Oh, that's the same box. <laughs> oh, that's weird. All right, guys, no, that's going to do it for I this show. I saw you show. looking, so I figured you wanted to see this again. <laughs> I'm going to go watch some Game of Thrones with my wife. She's making dinner, oh, yeah. then we're going to watch some Game of Thrones. Have you started and, watching Game of Thrones yet? No. I still not haven't watched seen it. One, not seen one episode yet. But I do know tomorrow is a very special day for you. So as your friend and many others watching the show, I'd like to say happy anniversary, my friend. Ah, thank you. <laughs> All right. For those who don't know, tomorrow's Briar Roberts' anniversary, <laughs> and he's been a very loving companion for, for many years now. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's, I think we're going to end it there. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> don't forget to check out Beastly Gamer on YouTube. Uh and uh, his YouPorn channel, uh, also oh, youporn.com slash uh, Beastly. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, don't ever check that. Actually. That's you know what? If you guys check that, it's going to be on you. <laughs> don't listen to this, man. You just listen to the worst possible fucking place. Don't ever go there. <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> don't listen to Brian. Damn. All right, guys. Thank you very much for hanging out. We'll see you next week. <laughs>